ooh, 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 ooh. Yep. That did the trick. That did the trick. Scoop this guy up. Ouch. They're so mean. Oh. Owies. He got me. <laughs> so, had to make a little bit of a switch here. Fish got a little bit funky. Rattle baits are all the rage, right? Who doesn't want to catch them on rattle baits? This is almost like the transition from going from jigging spoons into rattle baits. Number six slab wrap. I'm gonna let this guy go and then I'll talk about it a little bit. Well, I got shut down a few times in a row. Finicky fish, I don't know what the deal is. It's kind of midday right now. Not that early morning evening bite where they're really snapping. Man, I was playing around switching baits, put on a number six slab wrap, the biggest size they have. And when I said it's kind of like a hybrid, a transition from jigging spoons to rattle baits, what I mean is it's silent. No rattles, but you still have that, that lipless crankbait profile. And unlike things like jigging wraps and stuff, that are visual darty baits, this has a shimmy, it has a vibration. So it still moves some water. So fish can come find it. I got about four or five foot water clarity here. And so I still want a little bit of vibration. It's not that 20 foot clear stuff. So there are times when rattles are the deal. You're calling fish in, you're bringing them to you, they're aggressive, it just works. But there are days where rattles are the opposite of the deal. And if you've got a live scope, you don't need one to know this, but you can see a fish down there and you move your bait and you get the brrr, and they turn and they go the other way. Well, if you're lucky enough to have a live scope unit, mega live, active target, whatever, you can see that info from farther away, 20, 30 feet away, 40 feet away, you brrr, and that fish turns around and swims away from you. And that's when it's time to put the rattles down, get out a silent option, and usually before I go straight down to a, a jigging spoon, that's where I try this kind of middle ground slab wrap, see how they react to it, and it's a really fun stepping stone before downsizing and stooping to their level. Because who doesn't want to catch them on a big, cool looking bait? And you still get that, uh, you know, kind of rip and wrap, lipless vibe where if they're hungry and they want it, they're gonna crush it. Where like jigging spoons is a lot of cat and mouse and wiggle wiggle and coax and there's a time and a place for everything but this has just become kind of a really cool middle ground between the two finesse and aggressive presentations that i've been playing with a lot more and it doesn't matter where you're at well uh, central minnesota this is a great option later in the ice season because those fish get pressured all year round they see more baits they just get funky and that silent option, a little more subtle, can just be what gets the deal done sometimes. Here we go. Dude, they loving this thing. <laughs> That's a nice one. Any walleye is a nice one, all right. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, you saw I didn't hesitate at setting the hook at all, right? You see where that bait is? You don't, <laughs> because it's there, <laughs> wow. Got her, there we go. Walter Mondale, how you doing? <laughs> you think that one wanted it? <laughs> Look at where that bait is. You just see the butt end of it. Unbelievable. That hook set felt so good. Just whack. Zzz. Oof. Barbless and still might need pliers when it's all the way in there. Unreal. That's how you know that's what they want. All right. This is a nice little average bugger. Thank you. All right, so when I'm fishing the number six slab wrap, it's three eighths of an ounce. I love the tuned up Commander. I got a 38 inch. This is a graphite rod, 
which is super sensitive, super fast, and it's a uh, medium heavy, extra fast tip. You see how fast that loads up, which is really nice for working these baits. Really responsive, so you can make them do exactly what you want to do. Loads of backbone, perfect power for driving the hooks home. But I mean, enough little give in there to keep that fish pinned. It's also why I like using eight pound Suffolk Advance Mono with this. A little bit lighter, I'll drop down to six pound if I'm in a lake with zebra mussels or whatnot, but eight pound fish is really nice. I do about a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader. I always bump up my leader just a hair when I'm fishing any sort of lipless minnow profile baits. It just tangles up and they foul a lot less. So with that fluorocarbon leader, I do a little number 10 VMC rolling swivel down to the smallest double zero size VMC crankbait snap. Just got that tiered drop bottom, almost acts like a loop knot. Come and say hello. Yeah, baby. Love it. That one I was just doing the old little hop, hop, hop. There's another one down there. You want to come drop over here? Nice. Basically working it like I do with ripping wraps. Little one foot hops when they're off to the side. Once I start graphing a fish, I slow down and do little, little rocks in place. And then also just little like three, four, five inch hops like that. And uh, man, is it just such a fun way to catch them. So those last few fish have come on that green tiger UV color, which is awesome and kind of stained or off color water. Same with Glow. Headspin is another one of those kind of bright, out there, custom looking colors. Purple belly, chartreuse sides. Works really good in a little bit of colored water or for reaction bites. Where I fish where there's lots of zebra mussels and it's super clear, I love the chromes. Don't rule them out in stained water on sunny days, midday either. But around that zebra mussel weed line bite, gold chrome, chrome, there's a blue chrome that's good. And my personal favorite, straight up perch, but it's chromey. It reminds me of that perch colored jig and wrap. It's got the orange belly, bright shiny chrome. There's something about that that's a big fish color around home for me. So anytime I can find it in any shape of bait, I try it and no doubt it worked in the slab wrap too. Rip and wraps and jigging wraps get all the glory, but if basically a rip and wrap and a jigging wrap had an offspring, this is what that baby would be, a <laughs> slab wrap. It's kind of like a hybrid of the two. All I'm saying is if fish are not reacting positively to the little bit of rattle and thunder going on down there, give the slab wrap a shot. It has definitely carved out a role in my arsenal and I think you will be pleasantly surprised.